So Assassin's Creed Mirage is out, and a lot of people are really digging it because it brings the series back to its roots. It's the first time we've seen a non-RPG style Assassin's Creed game since 2015 with Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So yeah, it's been a long, long while. And while I wasn't a massive fan of what Mirage brought to the table, I do love the ideas, and I've been left in a big Assassin's Creed mood. You can see so over on Retro Rebound, where we produced our biggest video ever, remembering the entire Assassin's Creed franchise from AC1 all the way up to Valhalla. We even did a massive deep dive on Assassin's Creed Unity, and I even confessed on my Twitter account that I think maybe Assassin's Creed Syndicate was a bit overlooked because of the backlash from Unity. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I thought now would be a great time to dive back into the original Assassin's Creed and see what it offers us today compared to Assassin's Creed Mirage, since that game so happily borrowed from the bag of tricks introduced in this game. So, let's see what Assassin's Creed 1 is all about in 2023. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, Assassin's Creed 1. Ha, man, I don't remember the last time I played this game. My brother got it for Christmas. Like, he was always the big history buff in the house. So, AC always spoke to him. And then, like, as the younger brother does, uh, I I, bar I borrowed the game pretty frequently. Oh, right. The Desmond story. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people didn't like the Out of the Animus stuff. And I know it's because it broke up the Assassin's action, but when you think of what they were trying to do from AC1 through to Brotherhood Revelations 3, it's pretty ambitious storytelling, and it felt like there was a, a North Star for the story. Even if it didn't get there gracefully, it felt like there was a goal where then you ended up, I think they started diving into the Animus to make games off of it. Was that Assassin's Creed? Four, like making movies off of it. That may have been four. One of them was Unity or Rogue. It was. It got crazy once they finished the Desmond storyline. It was almost like very necessary for the focus of the entire franchise. As someone who had their first MRI this year, not a fan of this. <laughs> yeah. See, this is what was special about this series. Blending the UI with world building is like an instant. You're you already win me over here. Iconic sound effect right there. Doesn't get enough attention in the sound design world. I just feel like Assassin's Creed has so many little beeps, boops, and shing sounds that just stand out above so many other games. <laughs> you can mimic a scholar as you're armed to the teeth around your waistline, over your back. I feel like Assassin's Creed Liberation was the only one that had the proper answer to this when they <laughs> said like, oh, you can have disguises now. Everything is true. Everything is permitted. Understand these words. It matters not how we complete our task, only that it's done. But this is not the way I'm I know Altair's kind of deadpan, but I I dig man. that about him. Stay and all of you will die. That's always so weird to me in that scene is why your friends don't help you out. Like, he is your greatest enemy, and he is kind of vulnerable there with his back turned to two other assassins. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> we're back to the old Assassin's Creed parkour. Oh, boy. Now we're good. We're good. We're good. It was just minor setback, major comeback. Ambient music in this game is so good. I don't know if it's going to come through in the recording, but there's such an atmosphere to this first game. Uh, compared to any other entry in the series, as much as I love future entries more, just this entry has like a particular feel to it. Very grim. Like you can tell even in the writing quality, like much more serious, dark. There was no way back. Nothing I could do. Because you would not heed my warning. All of this could have been avoided. And my brother. Such a good start. Really, it is. Like I forgot how much I love the emotion of this opening like Altair kind of being a disgrace almost going against the Creed's ways time to do what any good Assassin's Creed fan does counter and kill everyone and counter it's just the easiest way to win why fight oh, counter oh yeah there we go oh that was my favorite animation as a kid I thought it was so cool I believe we are heading towards the first ever in franchise history leap of faith which uh, i remember how they set it up here is yes oh man so good show this fool knight what it is to have no fear go to god doesn't someone break their leg yeah Little, little Spongebob action there. My leg! 
Oh, I didn't know he actually breaks it back into play. Oh, man. Woo. Oh, no. Oh, no. No! Yeah, the, the, the climbing has definitely become way more smooth compared to where it once was, which you'd expect, but it's such subtle changes that it's easy to overlook. But, man, like, this is just so one two and three and four like that would be all one movement in today's assassin's creed games oh brutal holy crap it's a cool cutscene angle because you're seeing it from his point of view now you chose to expose yourself and it's interesting because before this you'd see that he was trying to like look away whenever he was in his face kind of like showing that shame it's a really good scene here peace be upon you Altair. the little screen tearing filter here is such a good touch I, I'm, I'm recognizing how great the cutscenes once were in Assassin's Creed, you know, what happened when they went to Origins, Valhalla, Odyssey, I love Odyssey, by the way, and I really enjoyed Valhalla, um, is they had to change how dialogue and cutscenes were handled because there was such a high volume of them that they weren't so focused like this. And in turn, they could focus on the quality of them rather than the quantity of them. Not that they were, again, I really liked Odyssey, so there was some high quality conversations there, some hilarious quests in that game. Um, but you just recognize the little differences here in the way shots are handled, the way filters are used, and so on and so forth. I just think it makes a big difference in how the story can be received. That was one thing that I felt was really missing from Mirage, personally. I know I'm harping on the cutscenes, but like the conversations even kind of remind me of like Dead Space, where they just happen in the play space, which kind of leads to a little more immersion. And I wouldn't say it's nostalgia talking when it comes to these cutscenes because the one I have probably the most nostalgia for is AC3 just because of like the time period. I was so excited. I was like number one on my list. I wanted to go to the Revolutionary War. Um, so yeah, I, I have more nostalgia for that than this one, but I'm, I'm really clicking with what they're doing here presentation wise. Man, I'm just starting to appreciate the environment more and more here. Um, when you look at where Altair is standing, the little Creed logo, the banners, the big glass set up here. Uh, it's just such a well-decorated environment, which is something Ubisoft's always been great at, even in Mirage, like just bringing their worlds to life. Uh, and I really, as someone who's worked a bit in game development, like I've spent a lot of time building levels, uh, decorating levels, lighting levels, and doing color grading for levels. And you'd be surprised the tone that you set for a level with color grading. Like you'll just have this feeling of, oh, it doesn't look right, but then you, in this case with Assassin's Creed, you put that blue filter in, and, and it's hard to imagine it without it, at least in the original game. It's hard to imagine without it. Now it's a much more vibrant, bright series. Mirage has the blue filter, uh, but it, it, it can make such a difference in how the tone of the game is received, and that kind of cool blue communicates a more gritty hardcore tone to me um so i just really appreciate the the art direction that they went with in this original game it is pretty special and it's very unique from what we get nowadays i apologize for rambling but yeah it's just something that can really define what a scene looks like and this man took all my health away all my health away how dare you? you've been demoted bro he took the hidden blade wow 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 can't counter kill anymore i am not god tier anymore ah oh, man this sucks I like how they don't let you run out of here. You gotta have to do the walk of shame <laughs> effectively. Now I could run. Okay. No one judge me, please. It's interesting too. His uh entire character model got updated. So the throwing knives were on his top right shoulder. That's gone now. So yeah, I didn't notice they visually reset him too to make sure that's in sync with Safety what the gameplay safe. offerings are. Has he lost his mind? <laughs> <laughs> Sit on the bench nearby and begin eavesdropping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mirage took this one big time. Lock on. Listen in. Yeah. I know what I saw. Oh, I like that they zoom in in this one. That's kind of better. In Mirage, you just kind of sit and listen. I forgot that they pull you into the conversation here. Oh, that sound effect for a memory block being complete. Oh, man. That... That brought me back, holy smokes. Oh yeah, the pickpocketing missions. Also on Mirage, so again, if you're liking what you're seeing here. Oh, hold on, I gotta get close to the pocket. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, in Mirage, they turned it into more of like a mini game where the diamond kind of shrinks. 
very interesting to see the comparisons and and how they're minor so i'm not going to lose my mind over it, but there's i kind of like for example there you have to get really close to your target where mirage turns into a mini game like i kind of prefer how the original handles it but i also respect that ubisoft wasn't going to just straight up copy and paste uh as hardcore as they could have nothing suspicious here guards just you know tailing a guy to beat the snot out of him and get some information out of him Wait, this guy land this guy landed a hit hold on offer you a chance to repent to renounce the evil in your heart. It is not evil in my heart, but truth. I will not repent. Then you will die. Damn, just... <laughs> no, no hesitation there, and just how do we take the most brutal way of killing him? <laughs> Holy smokes. And he gives me the sword back. That's hilarious. Like, hey, I just waxed this dude with this. Yeah, it's yours now. You can have it back. See, that was one thing I always liked about the older Assassin's Creed games is it was progression through equipment where it turned into progression through skills. So you'll see, like, even though they started you off with all the tools, you got a feel for how they all work together, and then they have you earn them back in their tools. It's not like, oh, your bird can now spot people quicker. Um, I think that progression by equipment is something that a lot of games could benefit from. You know, something that I really like about this game is how they work the camera when you do a leap of faith like they pull it out the field of view and then they zoom it back in so it creates this feeling like you're jumping off from something way higher than you probably actually are in the game world um, I bet that's why they made that change um, just because it, it created scale when there wasn't much and then obviously when you get to AC2 like you're jumping off massive towers and they didn't really have to pull back as far oof did not mean that. I love how crackly the the audio is so compressed. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad some of these non-main characters sound. <laughs> Gotta save that that memory space though. Gotta optimize. Ooh, look at them views. Look at that. <laughs> look at those trees. Flex Ubisoft. That looks good. <laughs> now, for its time, it did it did genuinely look awesome. Here we go. Our first sync point. This is where it all began, everyone. This is where open worlds died. <laughs> Man, to think of the scale at which you have to climb to usually get to a sink point. And this is like a standard building in AC nowadays. Like, I mean, pretty crazy. And you're just literally in a valley. <laughs> Let's check out these rocks. Pretty cool, right? I'm not even talking smack. Like, it's just, it's so amazing to see where we once were. Like, because now, now these, these sink points are like pretty much the tent poles of which they build their entire worlds around. Um, because they're all views. They're all just like, hey, check out how big this world is. And you have to put stuff in view of that. So they completely build around the X amount they, they put in the game. But this is when it was, you know, very new. It was very much a primitive idea and uh, not in every single open world game. So shout out to Ubisoft for, for charting the path at least a little bit. They do have a, like, the outskirts of the, the city, uh, an AC Mirage, um, which is, is very much like this. So if you also dig this sort of sense of vastness openness um you can find that in the game as well um, which i think i thought was one of the better spots in the the open world because a lot of what you see is the same so when you get out to kind of this big open desert it was a refreshing change of pace look at that now that's the flex ubisoft that's where you flex let it all out look at that beautiful damascus baby beautiful and the music hits that this is like step out moment quality stuff here back then at least oh Hello, my fellow scholars. Mind if I join you for a study or two? Let's do this. <laughs> Excellent. Again, I really love what Liberation did. I know it was just a Vita title and eventually got ported to current gen consoles, but I, I do think it was such a good idea to focus on costumes and disguises. They actually have it towards the later part of Mirage. You get two different outfits that kind of, kind of let you blend. Um, I'd love to see them explore those elements a lot more because again I, I love the OG Assassin's Creed outfit I just think it would be a natural gameplay option to, to allow you to infiltrate particular sectors of the world create different people in those parts of the world I feel like a disguise system is is one of the more overlooked parts of stealth games like I think of Corvo walking around and talking to civilians to get side quests and the dude's wearing like this metallic mask that's just so 
much screaming to me like I'm a supernatural killer. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> for me personally, I'd love to see a, a focus more on disguises in, in games that have stealth components in them. And so yeah, now we're in the open world sector of the game where you can just really take off with the free running here and accidentally make mistakes like that. But oh, or like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh man, the angle, sound effect, good stuff. Collectible flags, there we go. One of a hundred, <laughs> holy smokes. Good for achievement hunters, and especially back then when this world is not very full of activities, this is when we could get away with just collectibles being filled in these, uh, filling out these worlds, I should say. Thank you. I'll find a way to repay this kindness, I swear it. It's very interesting how the loop in this game works. You complete activities to create more hiding spots and groups of people to help you out. All right, here we are. The Assassin's Bureau. Love how the entrance is only through the rooftop. All right, so now we got a new set of objectives here beyond the little odd jobs like saving citizens where we can interrogate and eavesdrop a little bit and get some information on our first target who is Tamir. Now let's let's find out a bit about Tamir, shall we? Oh man, wait, this guy's got a right arm. Oh wait, he hit me with the left. No, I hit me with the right. Yeah, there we go. I know only the stories I tell, nothing more. A pity. There's no reason to let you live if you've nothing to offer in return. But I know not who. Is that all? Yes, yes. And if told you everything I know, then it's time for you to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Literally gets the information out of him by saying, if you have nothing to offer, then you will die. And then kills him anyway. Just, Altair just it, it is built different, man. Built different. Oh, no, no, he caught me. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad for me. We gotta hide. Oh, no, there's... Oh, hold on, hold on. I just gotta go over here. Oh, they're throwing rocks at me, I think. No, no, no. Just hide. All right, don't worry. We're good. We're good. We got we got a, a conveniently placed roof garden up here. We're okay. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> now, that now that we know what we're doing here, let's try that again. There we go. Acquired the letter stating Tamir prepares a large shipment, and he has no idea where it went already. He's like, dang, I, I just had it two seconds ago, I swear. <laughs> All right, an assassination memory is unlocked. We can return to the bureau to start that one up. Tell me, what do you intend to do to solve this problem of ours? These weapons are needed it's interesting. Now. Everyone's literally I looking at them no both. The men work day and night I'm pretty sure, sure he kills this life. guy. Does he? I'm, I'm around. So this is a, such and a throwback to when I was a kid. I asked too much. <laughs> Spits on him. You dare wow. Disrespect me. Peace, Tamir. I meant no insult. Then you should have kept your mouth shut. There we go. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> I'm just getting started. <laughs> Stop. See, like, right in broad daylight. Oh, man. You came into my soup. Just giving you a reason to really want to take this guy out. Just justifying the cause of the Assassin's Creed. Oh, man. What the heck? And everyone's just looking at him like, all right, whatever. Leave the body. Leave the body as the water that turns right. Dang, dude, that goes hard. Holy smokes. Think twice before you tell me something cannot be done. Now get back to work. <laughs> Imagine just being there and just seeing out of nowhere this dude in a hood's gonna come out and just stab this guy. This dude, my target is coming for me? You're making my job easier, sir? Sir, you real? are you sure about this? But I wanted to do this the cool way. Hold on. You shouldn't be. Are, are you sure about this? I mean, this works for me if it works for you guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> Got him anyway. <laughs> so this is it. The origin of, of these cutscenes here where you talk to the person you've just taken out. You get some context, some build up to the next target. And honestly, it's interesting to see how, like, I really didn't like this guy just because of how awful and brutal he was to one person. Um, it didn't have to work too hard to get you to hate someone, but obviously... AC2 took that a step further and made it much more personal to the assassin himself and, and Ezio and what happens to his family. But yeah, here we go. We're going to get the marker covered in blood and that's it. Our first target is down just like that. 
Oh, you can do like the chase cam. Oh boy. And the chase cam just had me run into someone because I couldn't see. All right, let's turn in our mission. See what the response to our handiwork is. Word has reached me of your victory, Altair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, that's our first target out and feels like a good stopping point. Like we've seen a lot of OG Assassin's Creed. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this dive back into the past to celebrate Mirage, but also just to reflect a bit on the similarities between the two. And I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts. So be sure to fire away down below. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace. Out of